keep an extremely current resume. It's got to be one which is going to keep you very competitive and stay relevant. Short, succinct, and very incisive. Please remember that as you go up the ladder, and many of you have already 20 years of experience, 25 years of experience, it can't talk about everything that you've done, right? It's got to be very short, very crisp, and it should hit people just between the eyes. It's got to be like that. It should pull attention to the most impressive achievements that you've had. And in fact, your covering letter has to stick to that. It's got to be about your relevant credentials, your relevant certifications, maybe. Be very transparent about any kind of uh, gaps that you've had. That's fine. It's natural. More women have gaps in their career than men do, which is okay. Be transparent about it, but also speak of what you have done during that time that you've been having that gap. Okay, it could be maybe added a certification, added a member to your family, taking care of elders, it doesn't matter. Somewhere that experience is counting towards the empathy in your own job with others who may be faced in the same position. So you're able to grow your team well. Basically, whatever you speak of in that resume, as well as also in your covering letter, has to show you as a very seasoned and a very passionate profession. That's extremely important. You've got to be able to build it. And if you can't build it on your own, there are plenty of very professional resume and career builder, um, you know, that there are on site, uh, online. Uh, lots of, in fact, uh, blogs that are there, lots of articles, lots of videos on building that professional resume. And one thing I've always felt a little upset about when I get a resume from somebody who's been in industry for 15, 16 years, it's very often that the last a uh, bit of let's say the experience is just an add-on so it shows very clearly even the font hasn't changed the kind of language hasn't changed and it's only you just added a paragraph on top that speaks about your current designation and what you do the rest of it is as long and as laborious to go through but actually what you must do is to speak about your achievements because don't go too much into the past of what you were doing what you're doing now and how you're adding value is more critical so please tweak it at every opportunity don't just add on. I would also like you to build because you are now getting into like we somebody spoke earlier about personal branding. You are going to get into personal branding more and more as you go up the ladder, right? Inside the company, outside the company, you're going to be grabbing speaking opportunities and so on. Have a very short, effective, interesting profile of yours, right? like the one that Sylvia read out, only what is really important, of course, don't have very difficult words in it or names in it, but have something which is going to be very easy for a person to read out about you. It should be written in third person. So the other person doesn't need to take your entire um, CV and then try to cull it into something that they want to read. It should be what you want to be able to project to that particular audience, right? So please do that as well. You remember when you would have done a project report, there's always a summary sheet, like an executive summary at the beginning of any kind of a report that you're giving to your, um, you know, a white paper that you're writing for your company on a new idea, etc. But there's always a sucking kind of a, a paragraph that you make out, right? Your, your resume or your profile should be like that. So that's your first point that I want you to definitely focus on. The second, and this is an example. Uh, and I love this example. If you look at it, this is somebody who's got a lot of experience. But if you see, it's, he's just made it so short and so crisp. And he's only looking at what he wants to be able to sell. And he's not looking at his experience per se. He's looking at how he's built those competencies. So it's about turnaround management, being a trusted advisor, being somebody who's looked at cost optimization, because these are all things that are needed to be looked at, right, at a senior level. Very crisp, very succinct. This I've taken from greatresumesfast.com. You can go into that and this presentation is going to be with you. So go through that link and there are lots of those, especially for positioning yourself in your current company for the next level or a new project, right? So it's not only looking at a resume to change a job. It's also within your company. How do you project yourself for the next level? 